Welcome to Breaking Bad Week on Earthling Television. I am your host, Garrix Wormuloid. Today's artifact is season number five of Breaking Bad, a show that single-handedly kept the AMC network afloat for the next half century thanks to spin-offs such as Better Call Saul, The Disappearer, Chile Con Fring, Skyler, The College Years, Tisk Tisk Marie, Flin It to Win It, and Holly Jolly Christmas. Season number five begins with drugs kingpin Walter White at the height of his power, fresh off the murder of a fast food employee. I won. Unfortunately for him, his wife loves fast food and gives him the colder shoulder. I don't want the children here anymore. Undeterred, Walt goes about expanding his business, which involves a bit of indoor camping and a good old-fashioned train drain. But before you know it, another kid gets killed no! No! and Jesse starts whining again. Resident grumbler Mike Ehrmantraut puts in his two-week notice as well, but Walt can't wait that long. After a quick performance of the prison ballet, Walt teams up with a new distributor and conquers the international markets like a shitty Will Smith movie. If only he'd focused on the domestic. Hank gets mad at Walt for having a derivative taste in poetry and starts getting all up in his krill. Then Walt's Nazi friends take it too far, like Nazis always did, by stealing Walt's money, murdering Hank, and locking Jesse away as their chemistry slave. Walt retreats to a cabin in New Hampshire to unwind, but when he sees his old friends dissing him on TV, his pride draws him back to Albacici for one last episode. He gives them some unwanted financial advice. You will give him this money in the form of an irrevocable trust. And then pays a visit to the Nazis, where it's D-Day all over again. While Jesse discovers his need for speed, ah! Walt puts on some bad finger and takes a much deserved nap on the floor. Series creator Vince Gilligan once said that Breaking Bad is about a man who transforms from Mr. Chips and we're going to turn him into Scarface. And while it's unclear who either of those people were, it's safe to say that Walter White does indeed transform. You're goddamn right. Goodbye. Besides his words and actions, this is most evident in his choice of wardrobe. The more compromised his morals become, the darker his clothes. Until he gets to black, since that's pretty much as dark as it gets. One of the key episodes in season number five is titled Ozymandias, or Ozzy for short. Inspired by a poem written by Percy Shelley, Ozymandias describes the barren empire of an arrogant ruler. The poem's speaker boasts, Look on my works, ye mighty and despair. But ironically, nothing of those works remain, only an empty desert. The fallen statue of Ozymandias is reflected in both Walt and Gus at their greatest moments of despair. Despair registers as a key component throughout the season. Even though Walt may have achieved the so-called baller status he's so long pursued, he's lost his family in the process. Get out! Oh! Echoing a moment from earlier in the series, Walt sees a familiar painting. I've seen this one before. A haunting reminder of the low-quality artwork that adorned Earth's hotels in that era. Another reason for Walt to despair is that, just like every single other job on Earth, it becomes a dehumanizing grind. After all this time freaking out about everything standing in the way of success, his success itself is reduced to a repetitive, albeit groovy, montage. Blue Furthermore, by this point, everyone's just recycling old dialogue. We're going to make a lot of money together. We're going to make a lot of money together. Do yourself a favor and learn to take yes. Learn to take yes for an answer. In fact, Walt habitually plagiarizes people he has killed, sucking up their mannerisms like one of Spike Lee's vampires. He cuts the crusts from his bread. He kneels on a towel when vomiting. <laughs> and as if murdering Mike wasn't enough, Walt jacks his drink order. No ice. Rocks, right? Rocks, yes. Perhaps the extraordinary Walter White is merely part of a larger and endlessly dispassionate system of cruelty. Just because you shot Jesse James, don't make you Jesse James. Team Rocket blast off at the speed of burnt. But if Walt has fully realized his position as the puppet master in season number five, it is Jesse who is treated like a puppet. By Walt, by Todd, by Hank. Hank when gets killed, we get it all on tape. Even by a local production of Avenue Q. When Walt urges Jesse to shoot him in the final episode. Do it. It's not just 66% of the Nike slogan. It's the latest in a long line of teacherly demands. Do it, Jesse, do it! <laughs> do it! I'll do it! Do it. And just as Walt begins the series by breaking the chains that bind him, so too does Jesse finally cut his strings. Do it yourself. With each passing season of Breaking Bad, Walter White becomes less and less sympathetic. And yet the series received more and more critical acclaim. Did Earthling audiences share Walt's casual attitude toward violence? By wearing his costume, quoting his catchphrases, Say my name. 
I am the one who knocks. And throwing the occasional pizza on the occasional roof, were they tacitly endorsing his winner-take-all philosophy? Were they each, in their own way, simply itching to break bad? I liked it. I guess it doesn't matter now. For Earthling Television, I'm Garrix Wormuloid. I hope you enjoyed this Breaking Bad special. Click here to visit our channel page and discover more of my videos. And be sure to subscribe while you're over there. To learn about other humans like Walter White, click here to watch Dark Five's newest video about good guys turned bad. Dark Five explores the disturbing side of humanity, and they have plenty of dark, unsettling videos about government conspiracies, murder, drugs, and more. Check them out, if you dare. All right, Earth enthusiasts, stay blue.